Hey guys, so today I wanted to video how I do the quick and easy way to hatch baby brine shrimp. It's kind of a hassle, you would think it's a hassle, but this actually takes like five minutes. So I have the lovely cameraman who is working from home today. Hi. <laughs> so he's going to help me. Thank you, cameraman. It could be the weekend, they don't know. Well, I just wanted to say it. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever, doesn't matter. Okay, so this is a one liter hatchery or 900 mil hatchery, brine shrimp hatchery, that I got from Gemco. Gemco is a super awesome um, company. They do a lot of things for fish keepers. I already pulled it out because it takes a while for the brine shrimp to settle. Okay, that part takes a little bit. You can see that I have a spotlight at the bottom and I am collecting brine shrimp using the light and heat. Can you see that? They're all at the bottom. Yeah, all the baby brine shrimp at the bottom. Ideally, I want to collect baby brine shrimp every 24 hours. I find that's the best time. They still have their yolk sacs. They're really nutritious. They can't swim well. They're tiny. But, I'm getting uh, hungry. What, you are? <laughs> <laughs> from because your, I'm talking about nutritious, from the delicious, yeah. tiny shrimp. No, I'm just going to go eat breakfast. I'm really hungry. Yes, from your description. <laughs> okay, just five more minutes. Okay? <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not trying to... Jeez. Okay, okay. I'm not trying to rush you. I'm joking around. Where did my... Okay, one second. All right, all right. So to collect the brine shrimp after all at the bottom, I have some a bleached container that fits under the bottom, and I have my baby brine shrimp net. So this is how I collect it, okay? Can you zoom in? Okay, so... I'm gonna slide it under. There's a valve here. Don't forget to put the baby brine shrimp net. I've totally done that a million times, okay? But, and then I'm gonna release the valve and just simultaneously drain and filter. Okay? I don't care that there's not a lot of brine shrimp up here, so I just let them go. Can you see in? They're the lucky ones. <laughs> yeah, well, until they bleach the container and. <laughs> Annihilate them. <laughs> okay, so you can see they're in here. Okay, so I'm gonna walk carefully to the bathroom. Past your luggage from Las Vegas. Oh come on! I'm so busy. Okay, so this is the salt water hatching solution. Just dump it. Don't need it. Rinse it. Again, I bleached this prior to using it, but rinsed it really well. Uh, these baby brine shrimp, when you store them, are susceptible to bacteria, so you want to make sure it's really clean. Also the net, also bleached. So I'm going to rinse them to get rid of the hatching solution. I'm going to gently do this. You know, it's interesting. San Francisco does use chloramine, which is far more toxic than chlorine. It'll kill your fish in 30 minutes if you don't treat the water. Baby brine shrimp don't care. They're like super hardy. So, gonna do that. Okay. And just rinse it a couple times. See how I'm trying to get it to go all at the bottom. Gently do this. All right. So we're gonna walk back. Okay, I just realized that it doesn't matter if I bleach it because I'm just going to use tank water. <laughs> but, oh, <no>. Whatever. Mm. <laughs> Start with a clean slate, you know. Can, can fix that in post. <laughs> so, um, I'm going to collect some tank water because I don't want chloramine to get into the water that I'm feeding my fish. Okay, about a centimeter. You want a lot of surface area per volume because you. I'm going to store these brine shrimp and feed them for a couple day or for a day or two. So I'm going to invert the net and just take off all the brine shirt. Boom. Baby brine shrimp to feed with. I use a pipette. It's nice and clean. And I can use this to feed all my baby fish. So I'll, I'll just do a demo, I guess. No, those are too young. Okay, here. So I have some gardener eye in here and to feed all I have to do is use a pipette and just go boop and these guys are growing super fast so I'm gonna put a ton in here killifish do that 
Oh, and I have some licorice girl me fry that I think can be used now. You always check if there's like still living brine shrimp. You don't want to add more if there's still a live one. Okay. All right, so I fed. This is my afternoon feeding for today. I get a lid. Hold for air. Then all I have to do to store it is I put it in here. Next to the Chardonnay. What? Where's the Chardonnay? Okay. It's a wine cooler. It's a wine cooler. Okay. <laughs> Come on. Set at yes, and. Yes, and. <laughs> Come on. I'm trying to focus. All right. So I'm going to save that and feed for a day or two. They do just fine in there. If it starts to smell off like bad, don't feed them because they've died. But they stay alive at cooler temperatures for like a day or two, which is great if you get busy and forget. So I'm going to get rid of my spotlight. Take my hatchery over, and we're going to clean it and set up the new one. Good chair. What? Nothing. Okay, so I'm going to get rid of this, the old solution. I'm going to bleach it. Open it and bleach it. Rinse it. Get all the old eggs. This is the shrimp apocalypse. Right? They're all going down the drain. Okay, close the valve. Get more hatch water. I fill it up to like an inch from the top. For new hatching solution, I add a tablespoon of salt. Okay, this actually isn't aquarium salt anymore. It's like kosher salt or whatever salt. You can use any salt that doesn't have caking, anti-caking stuff in it. Tablespoon, boom. I add baking soda. The shrimp like it, like having hard water. Tablespoon of that too. See, this is my cooking chemistry thing that I do every day. I pull out the brine shrimp eggs that I keep conveniently in the fish room at 55 degrees. Okay, I don't have to walk all the way to the kitchen. Okay, I put in three little scoops. I got these up. Um, well, they come from Brine Shrimp Direct, but I bought them from the International Beta Congress store. <laughs> I don't know, isn't that great? Okay. BrineShrimp.com. <laughs> BrineShrimpDirect.com. Okay. I put in about three scoops, which is more than enough for my fish. If you have extras, you can also feed your adult fish with it. Oops, put the scoop back in. This in. Oh, I keep a small aliquot or a small portion in the fridge and then I have a gigantic can taking up space in the freezer and I just refresh it when it's empty. Okay so I'm going to take my thing and mix it all up. If you put in warm water it makes the baking soda and salt dissolve much quicker. You just stir it up, suspend the eggs, cap it, so you can see this airline is connected to my central air system. I turn this back on. You want to get a nice bubble. Okay, that's fine. You see the bubble? Set it back. So I made this because I hate the light. So I did this to like capture the light. So I have just a regular fluorescent bulb desk lamp and I put it in this cardboard box and lined it with aluminum foil using uh, a glue gun. Okay. So I put it in here. The purpose of this is to not only block the lights, so it's not always have a bright light in here, but is to collect the heat and the light and reflect it back 
into the brine shrimp. So in here, the temperature is 80 degrees. And the warmer brine shrimp are, the faster they hatch, which is why I can collect every 24 hours. Here's the other side. And it just fits perfectly in the windowsill. And I'm done. Neat. Yeah. How long did that take? 10 minutes. Okay, fine. Not, ten, not five. 10 minutes. And you can do that every day like or every other day super fast. Thank you for watching and thank you cameraman again. Bye-bye.